What's up guys, Humphrey here. This is a little bit different of a video. Chances are, if you clicked on this video, it's because you are nosy, but you also wanna know why your favorite financial channel is still single. I've gotten a lot of comments from you guys that you don't believe me when I say I don't have a girlfriend, and some have even warned me that by advertising it on YouTube, it might attract the wrong type of person, AKA a gold digger, and be unproductive. So I wanted to make this video to settle once and for all, all the reasons that I think I am single, and also my views on dating, relationships, and also balancing a career while trying to find somebody. So my last real relationship was about seven years ago. And since then I've dated multiple women, maybe just for a few months at a time and nothing ever really was concrete. And I'm sure part of that is my fault. From age 28 and onward, I've been super focused on building a career. And so therefore I haven't really been prioritizing dating. And because of this, I think that that's kind of fallen to the wayside. And this is one of the things that I don't think is talked about online that much, which is that if you're trying to prioritize your career, it's really hard to date at the same time and even maintain a relationship at the same time as well. I also had this viewpoint in my mid twenties was that in order to date seriously that I had to be successful already because or else who would wanna be with me? Now you can define success however you want to but in my personal life growing up with immigrant parents it usually came down to how much money you made. I'm sure you've seen those TikToks, videos or commentary online from different women sharing their perspectives and they're generally looking for a partner who has a stable career and can provide for them. Hell, there are even studies that found that quote, for long-term dating, women value men with greater financial resources and higher status, while for short-term dating, they value men with greater physical attractiveness. So we're gonna talk about my exact thoughts on that quote a little bit later on in this video, but for now, just know that there's always going to be some challenges in terms of balancing a career as well as dating. Honestly, I think if you care about something such as a relationship, you will prioritize time for that relationship. And these days, the reason I'm single is definitely not due to a lack of time. I do have time to date. In terms of how much financial success I was looking for before I started dating. This is something that I've been wrestling with over the past few years. As many of you know that I started my first business around the age of 28. And in those first two to three years, I was only making 40 to $50,000 per year. And I was living at home. $50,000 per year in the Bay Area is not that much money when the average tech salary here is in the mid six figures. And when I was trying to start my businesses and entrepreneurship, I just felt like I didn't have the most confidence about being ready to date. I thought that I needed a ton of money if I wanted to take my future girlfriend on different trips or different experiences. And ultimately I found that spending money on a significant other while balancing trying to increase my own personal net worth was going to be extremely difficult unless I had a really significant income. Another thing that hasn't been helping is what the definition of success looks like, especially in the past 10 years, especially because of social media. For example, before social media, if you held a decent job and you were able to save and invest and you found a partner that appreciated that, then that was all that you needed. But these these days on social media, I feel like every other post is someone making 20K, 30K or 50K per month. And they're definitely more in shape or more attractive than you are. So in the entire history of the world, it is now the hardest time to live in in order to feel like you are enough. That's especially true when we're being exposed to the top 0.0001% of the entire world on social media, flexing how much money they have or what type of Bugatti they're driving. But here's the thing, now that I make enough money to be what's called a stable provider in a perspective, relationship, I find that money isn't everything. When it comes to being a good and supportive partner, a good listener, or perhaps even being very considerate of the other person, I find that all of these traits can be attained with or without money. Self-confidence is definitely the one thing that I lacked eight or so years ago. And while I thought that self-confidence was tied solely to money, I realized that there's definitely more to it. I think there are a lot of things that you can work on in terms of being more self-confident, including taking care of your body, staying positive, having a good morning routine, working on something Something that you find fulfilling, etc. Another issue with dating that I'm running into these days is simply meeting people. And meeting people isn't as easy as it once used to be, especially now that we have these little personal computers in our pockets 24 seven. These days, it seems like the default method in which people are meeting each other are via dating apps instead of in person. And according to most recent studies, the majority of couples in the US now are meeting online. A lot of modern daters these days are frustrated that the main source of meeting other people is the online dating whole thing. And women are also frustrated because men don't even approach anymore. And as a man who wants to approach more women in person, I find that there are three main reasons that I kind of don't do it anymore. The first being dating apps. It's a lot easier to meet a woman on a dating app these days and definitely a lot less scarier than asking someone out. Number two is the fear of rejection. Who wants to be rejected by someone in person? That is rather embarrassing. And number three, nobody wants to be labeled as a creep or creepy by approaching a woman, especially because 
you don't really know how a woman is gonna react these days and everything is documented online. So it's definitely easier to get quote canceled. So if your only source of meeting someone is through dating apps, it also creates another problem in our society today, which is the paradox of choice or the illusion of choice. And that's the whole notion where just because you're going out with someone right now, you're still a little bit curious about what's still out there. You probably wonder to yourself, is this person a good mate for me? Do they have problems that I wanna deal with? Or is there just someone better on an app that's just a swipe away? This is making commitment even tougher these days and leading to the dreaded term, the situationship. That's basically where nobody commits to each other and all of a sudden you're in this gray zone before actually becoming exclusive and just generally one party doesn't wanna become exclusive. I looked at the Google trends for the search term situationship in the past five years and you could tell it's absolutely exploded. And this whole new thing was a problem for dating. I mean, back in the day before cell phones and the internet, the person that you were likely to end up with was probably just someone in your hometown and it was somewhat compatible with you. You made it work with them because you probably had similar values with them and there was no way of knowing if there was someone better out there. And spoiler, even if there was somebody out there that is quote, better for you, just maybe in a different country or a different state, they're gonna still come with their own host of problems. It's not like just by swiping on a dating app and finding someone new that you're instantly gonna just get rid of all the problems that you need to actually work on to make a healthy relationship work. So let me tell you guys a story. In high school, before cell phones and the internet, I actually had two girlfriends, not at the same time, of course, but I did date two separate people in high school. In my entire 20s, I just had one. Now that's just some anecdotal evidence there, but it kind of just shows me that back in the day, I felt like there was just fewer stakes or less stakes out there when it came to dating. I also thought communicating was way more straightforward. I would actually call the other person on the phone and instead of texting in this whole little dance that we do today. Dating was also way more straightforward back then because there were no other options. It was just the people in my high school and there were two that I found that were quite attractive and I just asked them out and then there we go. This is all to say that I think these days that most people are just lazier or more unforgiving when it comes to dating. It just seems like if you have an ick or a red flag on the first two dates, that person is just boom, out of there. And this whole mindset doesn't allow you to form a healthy relationship with someone because you're not even really getting the chance to know them in different situations or different settings. I mean, come on, it's really hard to know somebody after just one or two dates for a maximum of one or two hours. That's a total of maybe four hours that you get to know somebody. And of course there are going to be some instances in which you instantly know it's not gonna work out, there are no vibes, etc. In general though, I do think it takes a lot of time to figure out what somebody is like. I mean, anybody can put on a good show for the first one or two dates, but after two or three months, you generally feel like you probably know the person a little bit deeper. Another issue that I've been running into is dating multiple people. I feel like that's the norm now, especially before becoming exclusive. That's something I've always struggled with. Whenever I'm dating someone I'm excited about, I wanna give it my all, but these days that could come off as very overwhelming and you definitely don't wanna do that. Modern dating advice suggests that you should spread out your options, diversifying if you will, and that way you're not too over invested in one single person. And so if it's the best practice to date multiple people at the same time, I find that we might run into the same issues as before, which is a lack of commitment and having too many options. So with all that said, and knowing that my audience is mostly male, 85% are men in fact, trying to improve their financial lives. And of course, some women, many of you have asked me whether or not making more money has changed my approach to dating. And if my social following has done anything for that as well. And I will say this, while having money to date is a nice thing to have, it's not going to be everything and it's not going to be the primary difference maker when you're trying to find a good partner. Most women probably do not care that you make a lot of money, but what they do care about is that you're a supportive partner, you're confident in who you are and you know what your values are. In my experience as well, most women care more about your potential and your ambitions rather than where you currently are in life. For example, do you have a positive mindset? You have a growth mindset about where you're going and you know the general direction of your life. I feel like these things are way more important than if you have a six figure salary. Now, of course, there are always going to be exceptions. You're gonna find those types of women that want the sugar daddy type, which I am definitely not one of, but the vast majority of women are reasonable women that are just looking for a good guy with a good head on their shoulders and has a general idea of what they wanna do. If you are a woman watching this, please confirm that because I am a man and I do not know what you guys are thinking ever. Money in my experience has had no bearing on how confident I feel around women. The factors that have made me more confident are just knowing myself, knowing my own values, figuring out what I want in a partner, and also knowing the general direction in where I wanna take my life. And I think that's super important, which is to know what you are looking for in a partner. And in the past, I definitely did not really know that, but this year 
here, I've been really focusing on what traits and qualities that I'm looking for in a partner. In the past, I would just go for the girl that was the most physically attractive, but then I would ignore all the warning signs, like they're a bad communicator or perhaps they just have a general lack of consideration. But you kind of realize after beating your head into that same problem over and over again, that just going for the hottest girl probably doesn't work. Instead, these days, I'm looking for a partner with traits like kindness, consideration, integrity, having a sense of humor, the fact that they're subscribed to my channel and more. <laughs> I'm just joking, of course, but these days I am open to dating a lot more women than I had been in the past. Now, one exercise that's helped me a lot in getting to know myself is just simply meditation. I've been doing it for a year straight now, every single day, as well as the fact that I also journal and try to do a lot of self-reflection. These overall have had a huge impact on my own confidence as a person, and just putting out this video is a testament to that. The last thing I wanna say about social following is that I do not think it matters at all. If you're looking at someone and they have 100,000 or 200,000 followers, you need to realize that it's just a number. It doesn't mean that that person has their life figured out or is more satisfied in their life than you are. Now, here's a funny truth about having a social following though, is that I would be lying to you if I said that it didn't help me in the modern dating world. In fact, I think it does help a lot if a woman wants to look you up on Google, kind of see that you're a real person and maybe they check out some of your videos to feel like what the general vibe is like. And that way, if you have a social following, it's a great way to get to the first date. Yes, I do acknowledge that, but it's not going to be the reason why your relationship actually works. That is, of course, unless that person is there for the wrong reasons in which I think I have a pretty good radar and a good sense of if someone is there for the right reasons or not. So while a social media presence can get you in the door, so to speak, it only goes so far and there are better things to focus on in life. Don't try to impress people that care about a number that doesn't even matter at the end of the day. So with that being said, you guys, I do firmly believe that if you are looking for someone, if you're staying passionate about what you are doing, you're staying open and positive and you're working on yourself, the right person will come along when you least expect it. To sum up my personal experience of why I'm single right now, I personally think that I was spending too much time working in my career in the last six to seven years. I didn't really know what I was looking for and I personally lacked some self-confidence in the dating world. Now that I have all of those things in order and I'm also aware of the pitfalls like the paradox of choice, I am hopeful that I'm going to find someone sooner rather than later. I've been really enjoying making content for the past five years. I love getting on here and teaching you guys about personal finance, investing, and now I guess relationships. I know that this was a little bit different of a video than I usually make, but I do think that having a good partner in life is fringe money related because by having a good partner, you're you're going to make better decisions in your career overall. Let me know all of your comments and your opinions down below you guys. I know that we all have different viewpoints when it comes to dating. Let me know if this resonated with you and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching, peace.